uh, something is going on because I am dropping frames like crazy. Very not good. Okay, I think I think it's working better now. It doesn't appear to be dropping any frames. That is Discord audio. At least I'm pretty sure it is. correctly. Hello. Does it sound any better? Hi, Dark. How you doing? Good grief. Every fucking thing. On my computer just decided, you know what, fuck it, I'm not gonna work the first time you boot me up today. And I can't even use my stream deck for some reason, it doesn't want to sync with the... Uh, doesn't want to sync with the um, OBS, I don't know why. <sighs> Let's try this again. Let's see if my computer does not lose its shit in the process. Hopefully it doesn't. Although that would explain why there was like a one second delay between me speaking and my model moving. I always wonder why this thing stops uh, working suddenly. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand it either. It's a real pain in the ass. I 
Anyway, welcome in everyone. Welcome in, welcome in. What is up guys, gals, and non-binary pals? We're back again with some more Pokemon Violet. I just got back from vacation and I feel a lot better. What? Uh, much more well rested. Hello to random... Uh, Earlier, just walking in sync. Uh, anyway, we are about to head off to the academy because we've got some more lessons. Seems I got back just why, in time. Why does it sound like Egyptian music or Arabian music? In oh shit, family? it's doing it again. Oh dear. What? Drop frames. Well, it says drop frames, but I'm still at like 6,000 kilobits per second. Unless it's... Unless it looks gross on stream, I'd say it's fine, though. Uh... It's moving a little choppy on the Discord stream. Yeah, but the game always looks like that. That's true, too. The real, the real uh, way to check is to check my tails. Looks smooth. Yeah, and it looks smooth on dis on uh, Twitch too. That's where I'm watching. All right, I, I guess we're good now. Don't know that why. That but... just that just vanished. We're not good. We've entered an alternate dimension. <laughs> I don't know why my computer decided after a week of me being on vacation that it didn't want anything to work. He had a little stuttering on stream too, but only every minute or so. Okay, I should not be dropping frames on a capture card stream. What is going on? OBS, why do you have 31 browser pages open? Uh oh, are we going to have to shut the stream down real quick? That would be why. 31? Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. OBS? Yeah. Yeah, this is... I'm gonna say this warrants shutting the stream down for like 5-10 minutes and completely restarting OBS, because that does not sound right. No, no it does not. That's uh. crazy. Pretty rough. I'm definitely gonna have to do some things with OBS when I pick the shop. Okay. So Looks like I'm not dropping frames anymore, so that's good. Yeah, that is crazy dark. I don't know why it's trying to pull 31 browser pages. It's ridiculous. Now let's start with art three. We'd like art with Mr. Hassel. Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Hey, it's Professor Gibble. him too, right? Our boy, I forgot his name, just sitting there. Arvin? Yeah, I see him. It's already wacky that we and 
like two other kids here are old-ish. This is clearly like a preschooler's a finger painting class. Why is Arvin here? <laughs> Hello, class. Jesus Christ, the Gyarados! Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Gyarados? those are. Yeah, the fucking top left on the painting on the wall. Gyarados. Yeah, what, oh. what about it? Nothing, never mind. It's actually better than. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna... If you ever decide to make like a full-on clip of this, uh, do remind me to uh, see if I can't edit in my picture of Vulgar Pond in the back and see if anyone notices. <laughs> <laughs> also, Pug, Professor Gibble is back. I see that. Hooey. I've been told that my previous lecture about the terrestrial phenomenon was very well received. Thank you all for your very kind words. In fact, Miss Dendra specifically requested that I impart even more battle knowledge to my students. So, I have decided that today we will take another look at how a Pokemon can terrestrialize. And of course, here is Professor Gibble to help us. Now then, Professor Gibble, if you would be so kind as to terrestrialize for us. Yes, you are glamorous. Oh, it's ice type now. Now, what do we have here? Last class, we saw grass type terrestrializing. But this time, we have something of a different shape. Observe. Terra Jewel resembling a snowflake. Its dendritic shape is stunning to behold. It's a little chilly standing so close to it. So, class, what Terra type do you imagine this jewel might represent? <clears throat> Ice type. Definitely the ghost type. No, you <laughs> got it wrong. Excellent, Thunderstorm. Full marks for you. The reason there's a snowflake shining above Professor Gibble's head is simple. It is now an ice type. And because Professor Gibble is currently the ice type, ice type moves would not be very effective against it. Keep in mind, usually they would deal quadruple damage to Gibble. Now, here's some trivia about snowflakes. While snowflakes come in many different shapes and sizes, most are classified as hexagons. Just think of it. Snowflakes falling from the sky, taking similar shapes without anyone saying they must. Do you not feel the great mystery of nature? The beautiful enigma we live in. <clears throat> uh, this is a bit of a tangent, but Mr. Jacques' glasses are also hexagonal, aren't they? I almost forgot to mention that you can change a Pokemon's Terra type at the Treasure Eatery located in Medali. Really? I didn't know you could do that. I thought they were set. Though I must say, the cook there is a little... prickly. You'll need to get on her good side if you want her help. What the fuck was that? Was that a game? Yeah, that was a game. Now, come prepared for next class, because it is time for your midterm examination. Oh, good grief. Uh... Thank you for your... Thank you for today, Professor Gibble. Uh... Just got done with the semester. I don't need a reminder of midterms. Midterm, here we go.
I do hope you're all ready, because it is time for your midterm exam. Focus and do your best. And begin! What is the name of the gemstone that blows over Pokemon's head? It's Rastalysis. I'm just gonna say... Thank fuck they didn't put a time limit in there. Yeah, I think it is Terrigal. When the answer to question one is in the shape of flowers, what I clever. I see what you did. In the shape of flowers, what type does it represent? Grass type. Gee, are most snowflakes classified as hexagon? Ooh. Where is the eatery that allows you to change a terra type? A uh, medali. What makes something beautiful? Uh, there is no correct answer. Damn. I got a feeling that all of these are technically correct, but like, damn. Yeah. Time's up! <laughs> That's it for today's test. Pencils down, please. I would rather not have students worry about passing or failing in my art class. But, but tests are tests, after all. Oh yeah, there she is. Anyway, good work, everyone. You can check your results at the front desk. That wasn't so bad. It feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? I mean, it feels great once it once it's out of the way. Never feels good, man. Neither before, during, or after. You must get three Every questions correct I to did. pass the midterms, and four questions correct to pass the final exams. Let's see how you did on your art test. You answered five out of five correctly. Hell yeah! Imagine there was a correct answer for question number five. Or Ugh. Was it five or that was, was it the correct answer was there's no correct answer. Mm -hmm. yeah, but like imagine if you pick something else because surely there isn't any actual right answer to that. You could just pick whichever one and still be correct. But like imagine if the real answer was that there is no real answer. <laughs> you just pick something else and like up oh, four out of five get fucked in four. <laughs> Mr. Hassel asked us to give this reward to any student who passed the exam. Gee, thanks. They gave me Smarties for passing the test. On God, I probably would have studied better if they handed out Smarties for <laughs> doing the test. <laughs> like, actually. But, oh! Fucking goddamn a memory whiplash. Uh, this is both uh, cool and sad. <laughs> Back in like first grade or kindergarten, we had this one teacher. They were teaching us how to do the multiplication tables. And they're like, all right, class, if, if you do well, we'll have a, like an ice cream party. I'm like, shit, all right, yeah, fucking love ice cream. So I, I do the thing. And I do it well. I learn a good chunk of my multiplication tables. And the day comes and uh, we're basically given like a single scoop, a double scoop, or a banana split, depending on how well we did. I did well, of course. But then, a cue systematic heartbreak and my first, uh, uh, my first exposure to major unfairness. Uh, because this one kid uh, came over and he didn't, he barely managed. Uh, one and two on the multiplication tables, and the teacher was like, Oh, sorry, honey, but the rules are rules. And she gave him a fucking cherry. Oh my god. He was, he was, he was crying, but like, he was doing the cry where he's trying not to cry in like public because he was the one only person there who got a cherry. Everyone else got like, fucking ice cream and like my fucking brain was like damn I I want to give him some of my ice cream now to be nice but I got a feeling the teacher's gonna fucking yell at me if she does and she mm -hmm. is like the nicest teacher she probably wouldn't have yelled at me she probably would have commended me for giving him some ice cream but like oh my god that sucks dude god I felt so fucking bad for him 
but also this ice cream was fucking rad. <laughs> but also, I earned this. I earned this fucking Sunday. Yeah. Ugh. Hello, class. Um, it is I, Hassel, uh, yet again. I'm pleased to say that everybody did very well on the midterm exams. As a reward for all of your hard work, we have a special guest visiting us today. Now then, Rassi, please come in. Oh. Uh -oh. Reaching. Oh, this. I am Gracious. I am an artist, and I focus exclusively on grass type Pokemon for my work. This man open carries a whip. I would not allow him into a school. <laughs> Gracious. Not here. only open carries a whip, he carries a whip with thorns. That is, I'm pretty sure that's a fucking humanitarian issue at that point. Geneva Convention or some shit. Bruh. It is, but he's not using it for uh, weapon purposes, so, you know. I guess that means it's okay. So he's Brass a poser. Gracias here mainly creates three dimensional pieces, such as statues and the like. One of his major works is the installation titled Surrendering Sunflora, found in Artisan. Many of you who've challenged the gym are no doubt familiar with these sculptures. Yes, I do recognize some faces among your students. I hope you all understand how fortunate you are to be able to attend Hass's class. Oh, Hass is the man who saved me when I had lost all hope and given up on myself. But he never gave up on me. I do not exaggerate when I say that he is my mentor in life. It is precisely thanks to Hass that I was able to establish my current art style. Ah, dear Brassy, I have nothing against reminiscing about old times, but today, I hope you will guide this class in a way only you can. Of course. Let's see. Why don't we discuss what Haas mentioned? Surrendering Sunflower. Can anyone here tell what my mood was when I crafted its detached expression? Uh... Sad? No? No, no, no. Completely and utterly wrong. I made the sculpture. I had surrendered all hope. I was prepared to give up everything. I had resolved to give up my life as an artist, if the piece did not receive proper recognition. Hence the name Surrendering Sunflora. That's exactly it, Huss. When I started out as an artist, I experienced many hardships. I even became deathly ill and fell into a slump that drove me to desperation. I began worrying about what would sell. I was only concerned with fame and fortune. But all my pieces during this time had no depth. They were all shallow trash. It was then that I met Haas. He helped me realize how petty I was being. I'll spare you the details, but in the end, I was able to leave all that behind. And that is also when I crafted the sun floor. Remarkable. Even I did not know the full story until now. This kind of thing is hard to tell someone, especially when they're so close to you. Now... I don't doubt that your adolescents will often find your heads crowded with worries. My advice to you is simple. Be honest with yourself, and do whatever your heart desires. So long as you don't cause trouble, that is. That is all for me. It. Yeah, really. I must admit, I'm beginning to feel a bit embarrassed. So I bid you farewell, us. And farewell to your pupils as well. Was desperate mood an actual option, or were all of them wrong? 
I think all of them were wrong. Because the first one was happy, the second one was sad, the third one was angry. Yeah. Oh, I see. I can't believe it. Such a wonderful class thing. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, he's yeah. really teared up. Oh my god. Damn. I'll go all the way up to Art 5. Wow. This will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Hello, class. It is I, Hassel, yet again. Yeah, I see them too, Cosmo. First, allow me to apologize for losing my composure during last class. Okay, Cosmo. It is. I was so touched by Brassius's story that I simply could not contain my emotions. I'm... Sorry for making such a scene. I certainly got a very stern talking to from Miss Time after that class. Yes. Uh, anyway, let us shift gears and dive into the material for today's class. Now, have any of you heard of the Ten Sites of Paldea? I have. As the name would imply, there are ten sites in Paldea that are considered particularly beautiful. Among them, I would say that the Grand Olive Orchard is likely the most accessible. You can see field after field of olive trees from the hill on the way to Cortando. Two waterfalls are also counted among these ten sites. Fury Falls and Casaroya Falls. Does that mean anything to you, Cosmo? What? Casaroya? Uh... Not off the top of my head. Okay. Sounds good. It sounds like Red House. Mm. Well, it's spelled with a Y, not a J. Oh. And then there's the peak of Glaciado Mountain, known as Paldea's highest peak. Huh. There's another cliff on Glaciado Mountain that's named after its rather unique shape. So let me ask you, my students. What is the name of the three-pronged cliff on La Sierra Mountain? No need to grasp at straws. Ah, uh, Grasp? I don't remember I this location. Reach. I think it's Reach, mainly because Grasp is what I would have named it. Well, he said no need to grasp at straws. Oh. Um. Fuck. It might be grasp. It is. Uh, exactly. It looks like an end taking hold of something, doesn't it, Thunderstorm? The three pronged cliff on Glaciado Mountain is in fact known as Glaciado's Grasp. Though its shape is far too stubby to be that of a human. I imagine someone thought it looked like a Pokemon hand grabbing something. There's also the mountains in Area 3 of the East Province, where you can get a good look at Lavincia. It's particularly gorgeous at night. In fact, the view is so brilliant, it is known as the Million Volt Skyline. I hear it's quite the hotspot for dates. And deservedly so for having such a romantic view. I imagine it's what do you what do the kids say these days? A very <clears throat> fleek selfie spot? Oh my god. I have never heard those words in my life. I hate it. That I do too. 
I mean, that's probably the joke, but like... Number one rule of making any sort of product. Don't fucking date yourself with trends, because Fleek Selfie Spot no longer fucking exists. That shit's from like 2017. I... We've moved on to even more cringe. I've never heard those words before. In my life. We're on to we're on to Riz Master Giotto higher mirror shots now. And I hate it. I'm trying to understand what you just said. Don't try. It'll just hurt your head like it's hurting mine. Of course, you may feel that not all ten sites live up to their grandiose names. How often do we visit some tourist spot only to be disappointed? Not to say you shouldn't visit them, only that you should keep your hopes in check. The important thing is to go yourself and see them with your own two eyes. I don't even know what Fleek is, neither do I, Dark, I am completely lost. And sometimes, a disappointing experience can be worthwhile in its own way. Take a chance. Well, that's it for today, class. Thank you for your attention. Ah, okay. I think I get one class for every badge I have. Every gym badge. You'd like Comac with Mr. Saguaro? Yes, I would like Comac with Mr. Cactus. Oh, we have uh, Comac with Chairman Rose's buff brother. <laughs> Put away your phones, it is time to begin class. In my last class, I taught about HP restoration. However, after class, I was asked by several of you about PowerPoints, commonly known as PP. When a Pokémon loses all of its HP, it faints and can no longer battle. What then happens to a Pokémon when it loses all of its PowerPoints? It can't use moves. Perfectly correct, Master Thunderstorm. Perhaps you know this from first-hand experience. Not in this game, but yes. When a Pokémon runs out of power points, it can no longer use its moves. However, each move has its own store of power points, so you can mitigate loss by using a variety of moves rather than just one move repeatedly. If a Pokémon loses all power points for all of its moves, it will only be able to use Struggle, an action that also damages the Pokémon that uses it. In order to avoid this predicament, power points can be restored at, H at uh, Pokemon centers along with HP. Items such as Ethers and Max Ethers can also be used to restore power points. Be careful not to confuse potions with Ethers in the heat of battle. However, Ethers are not sold at shops, so you should use them judiciously if you find them. The stronger the move, the lower its maximum power points. Do not waste uses of um, these moves unless you wish to run out of power points quickly. It is important to find a balance in a set of Pokémon's moves. As you can see, HP is not the only thing you must keep an eye on while adventuring with Pokémon. I hope that you will all take care to ensure that your partner Pokémon can perform at their best as you engage in, as you each engage in the treasure hunt. Our next meeting will be an examination day. Be sure to review well in preparation. Wait. After three classes you're giving me the midterm? I thought you had to do four first. No, he's giving me the midterm after three. Okay. Alright, Mr. Cactus, let's do this. My neck. 
The time has come to test how well you all have learned here in my class. Let's begin before the information simmering in your brains from a last minute cram session fades. Which is not an effect of a picnic meal. Uh... Increasing speed. Because you do restore your HP and I think you can cure poison as well. Which of the following effects the kinds of meal powers received from a particular nutrient? Pillings and condiments. Each of these berries can restore HP. The Orin Berry. Yandro wanted his Pokemon to decide on its own when to use its item in battle, so he gave it an Orin Berry. This will work as he hopes. True. If a move runs out of power points, it can no longer be used. If a Pokemon runs out of power points for all its moves, it can only sit there in frustration. False. Oh. The time for answering questions has come to an end. Please stop writing. I hope you were all able to give the examination everything you had. Please remember to ask for your scores at the front desk before leaving for the day. Five out of five, baby. And he also gave me Smarties. He got it as Smarties. They were just pure sugar. And I like them. <laughs> Excuse me. Holy crap, I am still dropping frames. I don't know what that's about. This is, like, legitimately scary. Put away your phones, it is time to begin class. Though some of you have had to retake the midterm exam multiple times, I am glad to say that the majority of the class passed without issue. I feel honored to see that the knowledge and skills indispensable for daily life have taken root in all of you. I trust that you will all work just as hard as uh, just as hard on your life skills in the second half of our course as well. Now let us now turn our attention to the topic of the day, which was inspired by a question I received on the subject of meal powers. The student to ask this question is a young man who enjoys the culinary arts, Arvin. He tells me that he regularly researches culinary techniques on his own, and pays careful attention to the ingredients he uses. He also spends day and night studying all aspects of the culinary arts. Yet despite this, he is baffled by his inability to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers. So tell me, Master Thunderstorm, since you did quite well on your midterm exam, what should I... <clears throat> this young man do to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers? Uh, he should make food with other people? <laughs> I'm tempted. <laughs> I'm tempted. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I know, make it with other people. Perfectly yeah. correct! I see that you are knowledgeable about the culinary arts. To increase the effectiveness of meal powers, your sandwiches must be filled with many different ingredients. For a single person, this may prove difficult, but if you prepare a sandwich with others, you will be able to handle a larger serving of bread. With a larger base to start with, it, comes quite s it becomes quite simple to add more ingredients to your sandwich. You could just make a big sandwich anyway. Which, in turn, makes it possible to receive meal powers of increased effectiveness. This applies more broadly as well. 
When dealing with a difficult issue, working with others to solve the issue may be the best course of action. I'm sure that Aravan will likewise work with friends to craft his sandwiches in the future. <coughs> the identity of the male student is a matter of privacy, so I would ask that you do not pry too deeply. <laughs> he slipped up anyway. Our time together has come to an end for today. I bid you all farewell. That guy was legit cool, though. I like the <laughs> design. <laughs> and now for Homek 5. God, I wish we had a economy over here. You mean home home economics? You mean? Yeah, home. That's what I said, isn't it? You said home economy. Fucking yeah, fuck it. I'm running a fucking restaurant in my house. If you want dinner, you better pay me the big bucks. Fuck <laughs> you, starter. Being five is no excuse. Get a job, you lazy bitch. Put away your phones. It is time to begin claps. While you're out performing fieldwork with one of your Pokémon walking alongside you, have you ever noticed changes in its coloration? Now, I don't mean that it suddenly becomes a shiny Pokémon or any nonsense like that. I'm speaking of it becoming filthy. Pokémon battle. They get hurt by moves used against them. They get battered by wind and rain. They get covered in sand and mud. They get, in a word, filthy. I have seen many a trainer walking about with their adorable little Pokemon without addressing their, this issue. It is deplorable. Actually, though... Let me ask actually, though, this guy is my favorite character in this game so far. Fucking look at him. <laughs> great design, great personality. <laughs> immaculate great hair. Actually great cares about hair. Pokemon. Yep, yep. Yep. <laughs> Let me ask this question of someone who I am sure would not tolerate such shameful conduct. Ah, uh, yes, Master Sunderstorm. What should you do if your Pokémon is dirty? Hang it up. Yeah, you better be sitting to this fucking class, Arvin. You fucking better be here learning how to treat Pokémon right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly correct. I knew I could count on you to provide he's me with such a battle an with that Pokemon he just caught five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, and he's also gonna fucking talk shit to a Pokemon that's been entrusted to him for years. Mm -hmm. Give it away to the first person he meets and battles with the first Pokemon he fucking finds on the street. Exactly, exactly. <sighs> Your Pokemon are dirty, clean them. This is, of course, simply common sense. While you are having a picnic, you can approach the Pokémon on your team and perform a variety of actions. One such action is putting them through what I like to call the Pokémon Wash. In other words, you are able to clean them up. You start by getting your sponge lathered up with soapy bubbles as you gently and carefully scrub your Pokémon. Once your Pokémon is nice and covered in soapy bubbles, the bubbles will encapsulate the filth then you simply wash it away with a spray of water. That's not at all how that works. It actually is, though. That's how soap works. Did you not know? No. Yeah. That is literally exactly how soap works. When you scrub it, it bubbles up when there and like clings to dirt, which you then wash off with water. It lifts the dirt off of your body or whatever you're cleaning by making by trapping it in bubbles. Uh, so the way it so scrubbing does nothing. Work... Huh? What? So scrubbing, no, scrubbing does nothing. Scrubbing makes them bubble up more so that they can catch more dirt. The way it works chemically is that. Uh... All the filth that attaches to your skin 
is what the soap sticks to. It's not necessarily removing the filth from your body from the get-go. You are smearing the soap across your body to stick the chemicals of the soap to the filth. The dirt, the grime, blah blah blah, pretty much everything. And then you wash that away, and it basically acts like a hook. And the water is the weight. I thought soap was just there to kill the germs, and you had to scrub everything off yourself. No, like it, nope. it probably kills germs, but the whole point of it is it removes filth. I mean, germ that... killing soap didn't become a thing until we fucking understood what germs even were. But soap has been around for a long time. No. For the of ourselves. No. Yes. So the way soap is made is that it dissolves the uh, membrane of the germs. That's how it kills them. That's what them. it does now. Yes. No, I'm pretty sure it always did that. Maybe it used. Re maybe okay. it did do that. But the thing is, you know, the original soap was limestone, right? I did not. That's how they discovered soap, is because limestone is a scrub, it saponifies and scrubs into a lather when you, you know, treat it right. Ah. Soap has been around for an incredibly long time, <clears throat> even longer than the knowledge of germs. Germs has not been a thing for as long as people think it is. We have not known about germs for the longest time. The whole point of soap, all it does, and hello, family, stop talking. The whole point of soap originally was just to grab the filth and wash it away. Yeah. Now, because we understand that there are microorganisms hiding in that filth, the soap is formulated in such a way that its ingredients are also germ killers. Yeah. I believe. Today we... I believe I've heard that soap is more effective at killing germs than uh, your standard alcohol, simply because of how it works. I don't know about that. I'm, I've, my fucking brain decided to focus on this. I don't. I don't know about that, but it's not necessarily more effective. The difference is when you're washing your hands with soap. Versus if you're just pouring and, like, scrubbing with alcohol or whatever. First off, alcohol damages your skin. And second off, if you're washing your hands versus doing something like using hand sanitizer, you are washing it away. Hand sanitizer, it just sits there on... the dead germs just sit there on your skin. Hmm. It sits on your skin and prevents more germs from forming. Is what a hand sanitizer does, in theory. Anyways, I gotta go and grab my dogs because they fell in the pool. Don't worry, it's not filled, it's shallow. They just can't get out once they're in because they're dumb. Because they're tiny little chihuahuas. She's had this problem with her dogs for... Three years. times! Yesterday alone! They don't fucking understand not to climb on the edge of the pool. And when they do climb on the edge of the pool, for some fucking reason, they keep falling in. Is it one of those above ground pools? Yes. Wow, they're really dumb. Yep. But what do you expect? They're chihuahuas. Yep. Anyways, I'll be back. This will get your Pokemon clean and shining bright as a terror tool. It is certainly quite a bit of work, but this will also restore HP and cure status conditions. However, some Pokémon may have parts of their bodies that they don't want scrubbed, or that they would rather not get wet. Be sure to keep this in mind when cleaning your Pokémon. Now, the most important point that I must mention is that some Pokémon like to be dirty. Though I will contradict myself by saying this. Please do remember that cleaning your Pokémon is not always the kind thing to do. Our time together is kept to a net. 
I was gonna say when we were talking about this, what about Pokemon like Grimer and Muck, who are literally made of dirt? No, made of dirt would be Garbo um Trubbish and Garbodor. No, they're made of garbage. There's a difference. And dirt. Yes, and dirt. Gar Grimer and Muck are literally living dirt. Well, they're, not, are... they're not living dirt, they're living sludge. Which is melted and dissolved dirt and grime. Dirt, uh, dirt, not so much. Grime, maybe a little bit. Battle studies with Miss Dendra. Class will begin soon, don't be tardy. I have dropped nearly half my frames. This is terrifying. I have your turn. Dendro, more like Dandriff to live out. Another day, another round of battle study. Let's get ready. Uh, let's get right to it. Last time, we learned about Terra raid battles. Did any of you have a chance to try them out? Terra Pokemon are super strong. And the, and the more difficult ones will use an even tougher tactic that you'll need to deal with. I'm talking about their Terra Shield. Oh fuck, they brought that back. It was annoying. What happens while Pokemon has its Terra Shield up, you ask? Well, it'll take way less damage for one. It has a big effect on morale, too. Try to see that, see that shield go up, they feel doomed. Like there's no way to win the battle. Uh, I don't feel like that, I just feel like, oh shit, this became a lot more tedious. So here's a question for you. If the Pokemon you're battling puts up its Terra Shield, what should you do? Call <laughs> your parents. Okay, Cosmo. No. Is it related? Now, you come pick me up. My opponent used their terror shield, and I don't feel safe. Mom, come pick me up. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Rastalize and attack it. That's right. You're a regular terror raid battle master, aren't you, new kid? Regular attacks don't work so well against a Pokemon with their Terra Shield up. But having your Pokemon Terrastalize is an effective method to overcome that issue. Terrastalize Pokemon will do more damage to shielded Pokemon, especially if it uses moves that match its Terra type. Dealing enough damage to a Pokemon with its Terra Shield up can destroy the shield and break the Pokemon's stance. This means that it's important to properly time your Terrastalizing in Terra Raid Battles. In conclusion, as they say, fight fire with fire, and Terra Pokemon with Terra Pokemon. Be sure to work together with your teammates to smash through your opponent's Terra Shield. Oh, and I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home, but I guess we're out of time once again. I just noticed Coca Oliveira is actually out there with me. And... Midterm. Oh, they jumped in again. Uh oh. Sorry to all of you who want who went to the schoolyard first before finding the right room. I guess we can do our tests in the classroom at least. Might be hard to write your answers out on the field. All right, time to put on your game faces and do battle with these test sheets. Higher Pokemon special defense, the less damage it takes from special attacks. Each of the following has no effect on a move's damage. The move's name. Unless that move is Power Word Kill. Mm -hmm. 
How many trainers are on a terror raid battle team? Four. What is an effective method for breaking an opponent's terror shield? Rastalizing and attacking. What is Miss Dendra's favorite type? Fighting? I think, yeah, she's fighting. And it's her friend who's the psychic type. Time's up! Put your pencils down! I saw you giving it everything you've got! I'm sure you'll all get perfect scores. Well done, everyone. You can ask for your scores at the front desk. Feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Five out of five, baby. Ooh, excuse me. Oh, that's cool. I can do... Look, look at my cheeks. I, I thought that was a toggle. I didn't know I could actually do that. Excuse me. Another day, another round of battle study. Let's get right to it. You all gave everything you had on the midterm exams. Well done. We'll resume our regular classes today, so keep up that energy for the second half of the term. Have you all been using the R button to send out your Pokemon? If you do, your Pokemon will run off in the direction you're facing. It's a super useful tactic that lets your Pokemon pick up faraway items for you. And that's not all. If you're a what if there's a wild Pokemon near where you sent your Pokemon, they'll start battling each other. We call those battles auto battles. Just as the name implies, your Pokemon will act on its own, meaning you won't have to give it any commands. And if your Pokemon wins, it'll get experience points just like it would in a regular battle. To make good use of these battles, they can be a really efficient way to train your party. But you'll want to remember that Pokemon won't evolve or learn new moves right away if they level up from an auto battle. Also, if a Pokemon loses an auto battle, it'll come back with just a small amount of HP left. Make sure to heal it up right away. Oops, I just about did the whole class as a one-sided lecture. Does anyone have any questions so far? Uh, I believe the important question to ask is how do I stop an auto battle? There's no stopping it out of battle once it starts. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. You can call your Pokemon off before the battle starts, though, if you press the CR button while your Pokemon is still on its way to its opponent. Even during auto battles, our Pokemon are out there battling for us, their trainers. Keep an eye on them as much as possible. And if it looks like they're going to lose, be sure to have them retreat. Also, this goes without saying, but Pokemon with low HP are already worn out. They probably won't enjoy auto battles as much, so don't work them too hard, okay? In conclusion, auto battles only work if a trainer and their Pokemon have a relationship of mutual trust. Be smart with how you use auto battles so you don't lose the trust of your Pokemon. Aw oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice. I just noticed Penny has a little Eevee. Light. What? Oh, I thought you said Eevee. He did. Yeah. I might well, not understand my Evoy. I didn't realize that's what you were saying. I also didn't do it right. It's Evoy! What? 
I don't know. My brain's melted. Battle studies five. I love the fucking zoo. I can hear your cat screaming now. Oh. Little sticks. This is why I don't stream on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Another day, another round of battle study. I hope you gave auto battles a shot like we talked about last class. Making good use of auto battles will let you train up a bunch of different Pokemon. It's also an efficient way to gather the Pokemon materials you need to make TMs and TM machines. Speaking of which, have you all been using the machines? I sure hope so, because it's pop quiz time. Create TMs, you need Pokemon materials, and one other thing. Anyone remember what that is? Uh, League points. points. Looks like you're already a TM machine pro, new kid. The correct answer is League Points, or LP for short. You can give LP and Pokemon materials to a TM machine to create TMs, but that's not all. You can also exchange Pokemon materials at a TM machine to get LP. I recently heard about some shady individuals getting LP illegally using a technique called hacking or something like that. I don't want any of you getting involved in bad stuff like that. Got it? What should you say? Hacking? Yes. Oh. Are we gonna lobotomize some real Rotoms today? <laughs> Anyway, you can also add TMs that you want to make to your watch list. This will let you keep an eye on the materials you need to gather. In conclusion, in order to make TMs, you need Pokemon materials. And if you want to get a hold of lots of materials, you'll have to battle all kinds of Pokemon. By the way, I, I learned something the, um, today. You know how I thought you needed 99 coins to evolve, uh, Gimme Ghoul? Uh-huh. You need 999. Jesus Christ, why? Gross. I don't know why. I really don't. Funny number. It's not even the funny number. Ah, Mr. Salvatore. What's Fiddlesticks up to? Is he in your room? No, he's outside screaming at my door. Oh. My dear friends, how are you all today? You certainly look fantastic. It's time for another one of Salvatore's language lessons. Et vous prêt? Are you ready? Ahem. <clears throat> Et vous prêt? Are you ready? Oui. Très bien. Very good. My lessons are not a one-way street. No, no. I am très triste when no one speaks up. Very sad, that is. In our last class, I believe I taught you all how to say delicious in other languages, right? In the cours d'aujourd'hui, today's class, we will learn about a very special phrase that you can put to use when the time is just right. I see you. Je t'aime. Te amo. Iklib. dick. Does anybody know what these phrases mean? Te amo. I I like you, or I love you. I love you. I don't think uh, je t'aime is I love you. I think je t'aime is I like you. Je t'adore is I love you. At least I'm, I think. Mm. I just I'm know the ones that, the other ones mean I love you. For sure. Uh. 
I mean, te amo, you know, because I'm a bote. Which is literally just please, but it's it apparently please stems from I will love you. Nice. I do remember that from Latin class. Right, Pug? It's been a very long time, but yes. <laughs> Wait, isn't that French? No, that's Latin. Or are you talking about what he's saying right now? Yeah, what he's saying. Medaille oh. d'Or. Yes. Fantastique, Thunderstorm. Correct. You deserve a medaille, a medaille d'Or. A gold medal. Je t'aime. Te amo. Ich leib dick. Do what to your dick, huh? <laughs> <laughs> There's also Ooh, German there, yep. You lick, huh? It's it's not ich. I know. I'm being a, I'm being stupid. No, no, I was asking Pug. It's not ich leib dich. Ich leise? No, that's not. Ich leib dich. Time. <laughs> it's too bad Gamer Probe's not here. He would be able to help us with this. Dumb. Guess we'll have to do. I'm sure he said words. I love it. Yeah, he that that is what he's saying. I, he's saying I love you. Yes. These phrases are you may know. I think. Why? Because they're all quite famous ways to say I love you. Oh my! Have I embarrassed you all, my friends? What timid little garçon et fille. Shy boys and girls, that is. Oh, I got it. Ich liebe dich. It, it, you, you don't... You pronounce it sh and not ich. Ich liebe dich. According to Google Translate, at least, which is why I said time for that. What next worst thing? Anyway. Uh. It's so very important to express your feelings, and uh, it's so very important to express your feelings about things to others, you know. This is especially true for positive emotions. If you get married someday and argue with your spouse over some silly little thing, all you have to do is apologize and say, I love you. Et tu ira bien. And all will be well, that is. That's not at all. No. That is not how that works. Wait, hold on, no. All you have to do- Damn it! Uh, fuck, maybe it's all on the stream. Shit, uh, back, ba 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 Damn it! I missed what? it. What? What? I don't think he was saying I love you. He was saying everything will be okay. That's what he said. Or you will do well. He's saying He's... all you have to do is apologize and say I love you, then everything will be well. Oh, hell nah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. And it's I should not know. at all correct. Why, just last week I had a big argument with ma femme, my dear wife, that it, I don't think that's right either. Uh, no, ma femme is my woman. I'm a slave owner. Or maybe my lady. My lady feels correct for femme. I should know. Why, just last week I had a big argument with ma femme. My dear wife, that is. But I was quick to say I'm sorry, and all was well. Well, saying I'm sorry is a little different than say, just apologizing and saying I love you. And now, apropos Jeez. nothing, let me give Why you did all they give one. Riz all of a sudden, fuck. Me, With that smolder ass look. I also love that he's got the Alolan Raichu tail on his lapel. Oh yeah, yeah. Also, his fucking hairline creates a heart, but it's cut off by the side. Whatever that is. I, <laughs> a I widow's peak? Like a Pikachu tail now. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> the, the little shaved section, is that supposed to be like an arrow going through the heart? I don't know, I can't see through the side of his head. <laughs> I just randomly had that thought. It 
it's best to be quick to apologize when you have an argument with someone. That goes for your families, friends, and your crushes. I know you can do it, I believe in you! Our prochain core, our next class, will be the midterm exam. Be sure to review what we have learned in all of our lessons so far. Adios, matane! I don't feel so confident in my French pronunciation. <laughs> it's been so long since I took French. Alright, here goes the midterm. Aujourd'hui, uh, today, we will take our midterm exam. Détendez-vous, relax, that is, and do your best. Étez-vous prêt? Are you ready? Let's begin. Gracias, arigato, merci, and cheshi are all mean thank you. Which of the following means delicious? Delicious. Which of these phrases don't belong? Time to eat. <laughs> when speaking with a person, what is the first step to smooth communication? Uh, bury them in flattery? No, compliment. What is your beloved teacher's name? Salvatore. C'est fini! Time is well, up! Our, our beloved teacher's name is Saguaro. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. C'est fini! Time is up! Posez vos stilo. Put down your pens, that is. Please, for the love of God, stop using the fucking... I hate people that do this. What? Sure. Say everything in two languages for be just because you can. So you hate all of our language teachers? Yes. The ones that do this unironically, yes. The ones that say it intentionally teaching you a specific phrase, not just saying it and then, oh, correcting themselves into English. Ah. Okay, so none of ours did that. Even, they. Yep, um, I don't know what's even worse than your case, though. I'll let, I'll let you finish first, folks. I don't know is worse. What? <laughs> mm. I don't know is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> Although, to her credit, at least she's not constantly correcting herself. She's just throws language in there to be colorful. Because that's what she thinks it is. No, it's not that she thinks that's what it is. It's that she thinks that's what gets her the most views. True. The real worst case scenario is when they pretend to say something in a language and they're like, Oh, whoops, my bad. I meant to say blah 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 in English. And it's like, shut the fuck up. Oh, because they think it makes them sound posh and well-to-do? Yeah, and or because they're trying to be the funny madam, I am here to learn how to say fuck in French. Just carry on, please. <laughs> well, at least you know some French. True, I'm, I'm surprised I've retained as much as I have. I Especially don't know the a dernier French. last question. Je sens un cheval. What? Exactly. That is the limit of my French. I thought I heard cheval, which which, which is yes. knight. No, cheval is horse. Oh right, that no chevalier is knight. My bad. Yeah. 
I'm sure you all did great. Bravo, my students. You can check your scores at the school at the school's front desk. It feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Five out of five. Keep going then. We're about halfway down the list. There's a lot of Jesus. Yeah. That's all begin soon. Don't be tardy. How did you like your midterm exam? You all did really great. We're halfway there now. And now, time for another lesson. Et vous prêt? Are you ready? Oui. Très bonne réponse. Great answer. Merci, my friends. I knew I could count on you, stars. Leading up to the midterm, we all learned, we learned all sorts of words from different regions. Starting today, though, I'll be throwing a curveball before we begin listening and comprehension. Oh boy. Basi, go for it, my assistant. Pika P, Pika Tu. A game that doesn't use the fucking anime cry? Holy shit. I know. Wow. The sad thing is, it also means Evie doesn't do the anime cry either. As you just heard, Pokemon can also use words to communicate. It's not always easy for us to understand them, but their words have meaning, just as ours do. Pokemon can use language to share all kinds of information with each other, like the location of food, or whether there may be predators nearby. The same Pokemon's cries may sound different depending on what it wants to say. I'm sure you're all curious, so we? Today, that is, let's learn some Pokemon language. Chitan Pri, if you would be so kind, Pikachu. Iga! What emotion do you suppose Pikachu was trying to convey just now? Uh, happiness, I think. Based on his body language. Sorry, Thunderstorm, that's not right. Pokemon language yeah. is hard, isn't it? Pikachu says, Pika! It's using its angry voice. Oh. That's... That's right, I had my little Pikachu friend here pretend to be angry for us. Don't you think he did a great job? Give Pikachu a round of applause, everyone. Paul. That e that emote did nothing to convey that whatsoever. How on earth was I supposed to detect that? Oh my god. I can't. Nope. I can't what? make that joke because we're on stream. Oh. The same Pokemon can even communicate its feelings in many different ways. Their voices change depending on their mood and physical condition. Try listening more carefully to Pokemon. You might even gain a deeper understanding of them. That having been said, Pokemon are quite mysterious creatures. Some actually don't communicate with words at all, but instead use things like electromagnetic or ultrasonic waves. Some even use telepathy. And now, apropos of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. If you poke at your Pokemon too many times while washing them during picnics, they'll get mad at you like Pikachu just demonstrated. I have no idea what this accent I just floated into is. 
Well, adios, matane, a la prochaine. See you later, everyone. You saw it, right, Gazmo? Yeah. Saw what? Check your DMs. Me. So I can tell you, so you know why I can't ooh, use that ooh, joke on ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to look. I yeah, didn't no. give it to you. No, it's it's in it's in just in her DMs. Don't worry. Okay. They're the only the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> My dear friends, how are you all today? I hope you're doing marvelously well. It's time for another of Salvatore's language lessons. Et vous prêt? Are you ready? Oui. I would expect no less from my excellent students. Even your replies to my questions are excellent. Aujourd'hui, today, we will once again be focusing on listening. Merci. Go for it, my assistant. Pika pi, Pikachu. As you may remember from our last class, the same Pokémon's cries may sound different depending on what it wants to say. Aujourd'hui, today, that is, we will be learning more about the language used by Pokémon. Yetenbri, if you would be so kind, Pikachu. Hmm, that sounds a little bleak, doesn't it? Its voice seems a little lower pitched too. What emotion do you suppose Pikachu was trying to convey? Say it again. Bleak, he said. Bleak and lower in pitch, sadness. Ding ding ding! That's right, thunderstorm. Fantastic. <coughs> Excuse me. The Pikachu says, Bwah. It's expressing kindness. Or team sadness. Kind of makes you want to cry, doesn't it? He doesn't look sad at all. That's right, I had my little Pikachu cries if it was crying. <laughs> Funny joke, right? Don't you think it did a great job? Give Pikachu a round of applause, everyone. <laughs> and now, apropos of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. If you hear one of your Pokémon making sad noises like this one, you should treat them with even more kindness than usual. Well, you probably already knew that, though. Piece of cake for you all, I'm sure. Of course, this goes for your classmates and others as well. Friends should support each other in times of sadness. I truly hope that you all can have smiles on your faces all the time, my friends. Our Poshan Core, our next lesson, that is, will be our final lesson together. I hope you're ready for the climactic finale. Adios, matinee! Okay, I think I see how this works. You get classes one, two, and three, then the midterm, four, five, and six, then the final, uh, the final uh, test. I think. Uh, history then. History with Miss Ryford. Here we go. It's her again. Dropped frames 50.4%. That is terrifying. It wasn't doing this last time. What has changed? Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday, it is now a part of history. Today, we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. 
As you should remember from our last class, Area Zero's great era of exploration began about 2,000 years ago. This era lasted for approximately 1,000 years, but not a single soul was able to venture all the way to the deepest reaches of Area Zero. Having poured much of its human and financial resources into the exploration of Area Zero for so long, the Paldean Empire fell into decline. 200 years later, or 800 years ago, the Empire and its surrounding nations united into one entity. This was the formation of Paldea as we know it today. Ah yes, this very academy where you're now filling your young minds with knowledge was also apparently established at that time. They kept it in great freaking shape. In fact, this school building, though certainly having undergone repairs through the years, is just as it was when it was built so long ago. This very structure is a piece of history. Ah, things of old are truly splendid. I would certainly prefer it to not have the Pokeball portion, though. The relatively new edition. Aha! Perfect timing to make eye contact, young thunderstorm. Let's see if you've been listening to my lecture. Tell me, approximately how many years ago was this academy of ours established? 800 years ago. Correct? I see the look of concentration on your face was indeed just that. I hate nothing more than when a student only pretends to listen. This academy was constructed exactly 805 years ago, to be precise. In other words, your academy here is 805 years old. At the time, it offered state-of-the-art facilities and a uniquely innovative curriculum. As such, people used to say, those seeking knowledge need look no further than the Grapes of Paldea. That's right, they were referring to Uva Academy. It is said that this proverb of sorts was even used outside of the Paldea region. Oh, is that that time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. Our next class will be our midterm exam. Bring the wonders of history to the forefront of your minds in preparation. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Time for the midterm. Greetings, my little students. It's time for our midterm examination. Summon your historical knowledge from the dark recesses of your mind, and answer the questions. What's the name of the geological formation in the center of the region, the Great Crater of Paldea. What was long believed to rest in the depths? Area zero. Uh, treasure. How many years ago did the Paldean Empire begin to rule this region? Uh, appro approximately 2,000, I believe. Oh, yeah. How many years ago was this academy built? 805 years ago. Those seeking knowledge need look no further than the grapes of Paldea. Your time is up. Put your utensils down. That last question was a freebie. Even the least capable of you surely padded your score there. I sincerely hope you did anyway. So ends our midterm examination. You may ask for your scores at the school's front desk. And there they go again. Five out of five. Ew. Uh, pardon. You okay? 
It made some whack ass noise, my bad. I'm trying to go, wow! Damn, I can't even do it right. Wow! Wow! Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday, it is now a part of history. I was hoping to continue unraveling the marvels that history has presented to us today. However, I imagine your ability to concentrate has been spectacularly derailed by my midterm. Yeah, you got that right. I remember in high school, the midterms would just absolutely fry our brains. I suppose changing things up for fun and variety may be a good idea every now and then. So allow me to tell you an old fairy tale that has been passed down in Paldea for generations. Once upon a time, there was a king who very much enjoyed collecting treasure. He was particularly fond of treasures from other countries. One day a merchant from the east heard rumors of this king and came to meet him. Merchant laid out four treasures in front of the treasure loving king. The four treasures were as follows a vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. When you say a vessel, you mean like up? A drinking vessel? Seeing such rarities before him, the king leaped for joy. He showered the merchant with gold coins and claimed all four of the treasures for himself. What a dick. Hmm. I said that one of the treasures was a set of tablets. What do you think those tablets were? Uh... I had to guess. If I had to guess, they were etchings of some kind. I don't think they would be made of wood, but I get the impression that's what they were. Correct? Your daily pursuit of knowledge serves you well. These particular tablets were wooden and used as a writing medium in the East in ancient times. As you may know, they fell out of popular use as paper became more universally available. For the king to consider these paper substitutes treasures, they must have been of superb quality. That or perhaps they had some amazingly profound teachings written on them. So, the king obtained these four, te these four treasures and on that very night, it is said that a terrible disaster rang down upon his castle, reducing it to rubble by dawn. Oh, is that the time already? I wasn't done with my story, but alas, so ends today's lesson. If you're interested in how the story ends, you may come see me outside class hours. I'd, I'd be interested. Maybe we can go see. Yeah. There's a school store? Hello! Why not have a browse, my dear? We've all sorts of handy items. Oh, wow. It's like a full-on Pokemart in here. It'd be nice if they offered more uniform choices. No, I never. If they couldn't do that, that would be too nice. 
It's like they've never been to a school store before. She's in the staff room. Thunderstorm from Class 1A. The way you conduct yourself in my class and the answers you give to my questions. I admit, they pique my interest. You are quite the interesting pupil, I must say. Tell me, Thunderstorm, given a choice, which do you prefer? Things of old or things that are new? Well, I'll be honest, some of the new things that I see these days kind of depress me. I'd like to take the chance to learn from older things. Ah, so you prefer the things of the past, do you? The potential I saw in you was real after all. Ah, this one may indeed be of good use to me someday. You can disregard that, I was simply thinking out loud. Mm-hmm, sure. I enjoyed our little conversation today. You have my thanks, Thunderstorm. Became slightly closer with Miss Wright Ford. What? Uh, I'm sorry. I uh, need to record this for evidence purposes. <laughs> That one's going in the report. You mind explaining yourself? You are quite the interesting pupil, Thunderstorm. You're, so you're not even going to tell me the end of the story, huh? Oh, Thunderstorm! Did you come all the way here to the staff room just to see me? You did? <laughs> Seems I finally made it into the hearts of my students. That makes me very happy. After all, like I said in class, communication is very important. If there's anything you're confused about in class, or if you're having trouble here at the academy, you can always come and tell me. Don't me Salvatore. Your friend Salvatore, that is. Place. I, I don't know what that last word was. Slightly closer with Mr. Salvatore. My dear Thunderstorm, let's communicate a, a bit. Communicate, that is. And you're the math teacher. Oh my, if it isn't Thunderstorm. Hello there. You perhaps have a question about class? Uh, yes, I have a question. What were you having trouble with? Let's have a little review here, shall we? Flying-type Pokémon are weak to rock-type Pokémon. When a rock-type hits a flying-type, it becomes of the move's damage. Doubled. That's right! The correct answer is that the move's damage is doubled. Miss Time! Miss Time! Oh my, I see one of my, one of my more energetic students is here to see me. Uh, you'll have to wait your turn, dear. There's only one of me, after all. Um, Miss Time? Is it true that you were a gym leader? That is indeed true. I'm quite the strong battler, you know. Wow, that's so cool! Why'd you quit? So you want to know, do you? I might be persuaded to tell you if you wait your turn. Oh, 
Okay, I can wait my turn. I sure can. I'm sorry for cutting our conversation short, Thunderstorm, but I seem to be in high demand today. Feel free to come and see me anytime if you have questions for me. Okay, then. Oh, she's waiting in the entrance hall. I didn't realize that. There she is. Why, if it isn't Thunderstorm from Class 1A. Are you perhaps interested in the rest of the old tale I told you in class? Yes, yes, I am. It is convenient that you would take the bait I presented in class. Vessel, sword, set of tablets, and a set of beads. After obtaining these four treasures, the king's castle was destroyed. Why, you ask? Because these four treasures were actually four Pokemon. As these Pokemon were passed from human hand to human hand as treasures, they slowly became tainted by hubris and greed. Finally, after coming in contact with the rapacity of the king at that time, they awakened as disasters and began to rampage out of control. The king called for renowned Pokemon wielders to defend the country, and, after a fierce battle, these incarnations of disaster were quelled. It is said that these four Pokemon were then sealed away somewhere in Paldea. So, what do you think? Would you say the story is just make-believe? I don't know. A lot of people would have said that the story of Ogre Pond was make-believe, but it was definitely not. Ogre Pond was DLC, though. <laughs> Very astute of you. I have read many historical disaster reports, personal journals, and the like. There is much to support the truth of this story. If I am able to prove the story's veracity myself, I'll be sure to let you know. Okay, then. Time for History 5. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday, it is now a part of history. Today, we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented us. I trust that you all remember our lesson before the midterm exam concerning the great crater of Paldea and its interior, Area Zero. This mysterious crater captured the imaginations of many, including the former Paldean Emperor. 200 years ago, a group of explorers claimed to have finally reached its depths. The name of the team that achieved this great feat was the Area Zero Expedition. The team is said to have been made up of Paldea's best and brightest. Skilled battlers, brilliant researchers, talented individuals of all kinds. Among the list of team members was the name of a man who was an author and brilliant natural historian. After returning from the expedition to Area Zero, he, he used his literary talent to record the events of the expedition and publish them. Ah, perfect timing. Let's see if you were paying attention. What was the name of the team that first made it to the deepest reaches of the Great Crater? Area Zero Expedition. Survey Corps. No, we're not at the Legends game for this region yet. Dub dub. Correct. To pick on and remember a term, I simply slipped into the flow of the lecture. 
You really are quite the clever one. The correct name for this team was the Area Zero Expedition. Oh, they kind of harped on it just a little bit there. A little bit. You know, they give a whole new camera angle and everything. Yeah. The record of their activities, written by Expedition member Heath, can be found in stores and the like even today. This record is known as the Violet Book. At the time, the entire region of Paldea was absolutely buzzing about Area Zero. The Violet Book was so popular that practically everyone had a copy. However, the book itself was full of fantastical descriptions and illustrations of things that could never be thought of as real. Masses began to call Heath a liar. Even the truth of the expedition making it to the bottom of the crater was called into question. The Violet Book was condemned to the shelves of used bookstores as just another book of wild paranormal stories. There's a copy on one of the bookshelves on the ground floor of the entrance hall. Feel free to have a read if you're interested. Oh, that time already. I must have gotten swept up and fill your minds with knowledge. We will unravel more of history's enigmas together next time. Do math next. Hello, everyone. Let's have a fun class today. Tell me, do you all enjoy fortune telling, horoscopes, and the like? Not particularly. I think it feels great to read your horoscope and see what it says. See that it says good luck is coming your way. So today I'd like to teach you all math while focusing on the topic of luck. Are you gonna teach us how to make a random number generator? I actually have a mild story about one of the most random random number generators that exist, but that is a tangent. Okay. Perhaps you've seen oh. the following for it. Oops, sorry. No, I, I was like, oh, you actually want to hear it? Okay. <laughs> kind of. Up to you. Uh, is it stream safe? Probably. Okay. So, I don't remember what company it is, but there exists a company that has an, an encryption system using a number, random number generator. But that run random number generator is uh, powered by lava lamps. Really? Yep. They have a wall of lava lamps with a camera that watches the lava lamps. And whenever the lava lamp detects a movement from the lava lamps or any changes, it sends those archaic signals to a computer, and those computers create an honest-to-god random number generator. I think I remember seeing this on NCIS. I don't know about that. <clears throat> but there does exist a wall with a camera watching the lava lamps and it just generates actual random numbers. Because computers have patterns. Real life does not, for nope. the most part. So it takes actual real-life random sequences of camera footage of lava lamps in action and encodes I, that into a, you know, it's I have, an algorithm. I have no idea how that would work. I don't know how you could use lava lamps for encryption other than Perlin noise generation. Basically, they have a random number generator that is constantly being influenced by the random sequences and variables given by the camera. Cameras, uh, or rather, programs can be... Ugh, bruh, yeah. Programs can be programmed. <laughs> programs can be laid out to receive the camera footage, make note of the color images used in said footage, 
and we'll just fucking add random values depending on which frame, which frame, which area of the footage has what colors and what lighting, etc., etc. So <laughs> as the different lava lamps move around, it just is in a constant flux of what is being sent to the, the algorithm sort of thing. They have their own random number generator in Cryptor, and then they also have this weird lava lamp thing that is constantly fucking, like, you know, adding shit to the thing. Yeah. Making it nigh on impossible for anyone to crack the code because it's constantly shifting. Yeah. And it's shifting in a way that a computer cannot naturally do it because it is using real-life inputs. Yeah. Lamp. Perhaps you have seen the following phrase crop up during Pokemon battles before. A critical hit. When a Pokemon's attack lands a critical hit, the damage it deals is increased by half. In other words, it does one and a half times as much damage as it normally would. It is truly luck that determines whether your Pokemon lands a critical hit, or has one landed on it. This can cause a great upset in battle. Does anyone know what percent chance a Pokemon has of landing a critical hit? Uh, I'm gonna go with 1%. Oh my, critical hits land a little more often than that, Cinderstorm. Fair and balanced. What, a 5% chance, maybe? The chance of landing a critical hit is said to be 1 in 24, which figures to roughly 4.17%. The odds are more favorable for certain moves, though. Why, moves such as Stone Edge and Shadow Claw have about a 12% chance. You can also use a move called Focus Energy, or I didn't notice a dire hit. Both raise the critical hit ratio by two, by two stages. That's a 50% chance to land a critical hit. Feels great to land a critical hit, but perhaps not so great to be struck by one. There is a surprising amount of mathematical probability handed, hidden in Pokemon battles, you know. If you're able to do the calculations that'll swing luck in your favor, it may open the door for more strategic choices for, your, for you during battle. Oh my, is that the bell? Suppose that's all for now. What a shame. Next class will be our fun midterm exam. Hope you'll be looking forward to it. Not in the slightest. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just, just the word midterm evokes flashbacks. Yep. Uh, it is kind of late, so I'm gonna look for someone for us to raid. Oh. It's about 10.30. Well, Oof. Yep, yep. Right on. Well, while you do that, I'm gonna hop to the bathroom then. <laughs> oh, this one was a fun stream, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was a noise. I was stretching. Twitch Rivals is the first thing on my Twitch page. And who do I see but Jinxie? If you don't know who that is, I'll explain later. Okay. Two. 
Neapolitan, who is currently playing Hades 2. Let me go ahead and put the raid message in chat. There is our raid message. Be sure and copy that. They changed the way that it works on here. Alrighty. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, night, what have you. And I will see you next time. Thank you for joining me. Hmm.